Hey everybody, it's Joe Deganzik and this is Life in the Smarter Home. It's another one of our Q&A episodes, uh, the second one for the month on home automation and the stuff in the smarter home, as we like to call it. Uh, we take the, um, the, epi- the episodes, the comments and questions that you submit during uh, the previous month, take the best ones, the most interesting ones for the audience and put them into this show and the previous one, which was on lighting and LED stuff and whatnot. So please send in your questions. Um, the best way you can comment, you can send a YouTube message, and all those kind of things, the best way is to send them in to questions at smarterhomelife.com. It goes into a separate email box. It's a lot easier to figure things out. One would think that YouTube would make it easier to manage comments, but it does not. So that's probably not your problem. It's my problem, but I figured I would just mention that. The easiest way is just to email me uh, directly at uh, questions at smarterhomelife.com. So without further ado, let's jump right into the questions. We've got a couple of them that are pretty good. Okay, email from JJJSD. Uh, there's a new one. Um, anyhow, uh, hello, what water leak detectors by Insteon or whatever brand you suggest can also detect oil leak? Perhaps leaks. Uh, also, which sensor can I get alerts sent to my smartphone app? Thanks, Joe. So, thank you, JJJSD. Maybe he lives in South Dakota. Maybe not. Anyhow, um, leak detectors, right? We talked about this little guy. Let me make sure I put the brand first. Here we go. Um, by Insteon. This is, you know, it's, it's tiny, right? It's a tiny little guy. It's got the little... Um, little metal feet, you know, two of them, and plastic feet on one side, um, that detect um, water by basically connecting them together. Um, So if you put it down on a metal surface, it's going to go off like constantly. I figured that one out. But anyhow, these water leak detectors do not necessarily work with oil or or liquids other than water for the pure and simple reason that water oils, gasoline, I mean, there's so many different liquids out there, right? And not all of them are obviously made up of the same base chemical components. So something that will detect, basically it's putting a little bit of electricity through the water to sense if there is actually water present. That's how this thing works. It's not gonna work the same as something that works with oil or some other liquid. There was, and I did some research before responding to um, JJJSD, uh, and I responded, like I said, I generally get back to you within a few days and we take these and put them on the the show. But um, I did a little bit of research before I responded to say, well, maybe there is such a thing. But um, an oil leak detector would be good if you have perhaps an oil fired furnace for your home down in the basement or on the first level, and you obviously want to detect if there is an oil leak. Oil is flammable, it's a, a combustible uh, substance, you know, so it's it's a tremendous problem if you have a leak. But there doesn't appear to be anything that's a consumer, like go just grab it, download it, you know, download the app and get a product. Everything seems to be aimed at industrial uses. So maybe this is something that manufacturers of smarter home and home automation devices, IoT, XYZ devices should look into. Some people said that they got water leak detectors to work with oil and you might get it to work part of the time, but not necessarily all the time. So the other thing that he asked in the question was brands, Insteon. This is by Insteon. There are a number of water leak detectors that work with different home automation systems. Obviously Z-Wave would be popular with something like a SmartThings or some other home automation uh, controller. Um, again, for oil, probably not going to work. The other question he had was about smartphone alerts. Now, if you hooked up a Z-Wave um, or perhaps even a Zigbee-based, although I think those are very rare, um, a detector sensor to your home automation system, such as a smart things that was capable of interfacing back to your phone because it's got an app that's running on your phone on, on top of the the hub or the bridge that's actually running and talking to all these devices, then yes, you could get um, some sort of alert. Probably the same thing if you're using the Insteon hub and you could get an alert as well. I don't know if I have the um, the sound turn on, let's see. 
Nope, I think I turned the sound off on the on the iMac back there. Um, but there's an audio alert that I get here at home. I haven't set it up to the phone because I just haven't set it up um, yet because I just haven't done that. But anyhow, uh, if I press this button and I normally would get some kind of audio message off the, the computer. Um, actually, I think it's... Anyways, it's not important uh, at this point, but normally it would say something uh, if there was a leak or if I was simply testing it. So yes, you can get that set up um, and I will, I've will. i already responded to you about that. So, um, But look for other people. Look in the show notes um, for some information on that. So thank you for your question, um, and JJJSD, about, about oil leak detectors. Okay, an email from Jacob, and this is actually this is actually pretty cool because we actually just literally covered it. So, hey, I really like the channel. Well, thank you so much. Um, I really like producing these episodes for you guys. Uh, keep them videos coming. Will do. Uh, I have a lot of Philips Hue lights in my house. He's probably talking about these guys, the Philips Hue. This is like the original Philips Hue bulb, of which there are now like a million different types of um, Philips Hue lighting devices. I um, have a lot of these in my house. I was wanting to get some sort of sensor that when I walk into my bedroom, the sensor would know I just walked in and turn my lights on and when I leave the room, turn them off. Do you know of any sens sensors I could use with Philips Hue lights for this and what all would I need to do? I emailed him back and, and had some questions for him and I don't re remember if he actually replied back. But the questions would be is A, um, do you only have Philips Hue lights or are they connected to some sort of home automation system? If that's true, you could have an occupancy sensor in the room that would detect your presence, send a signal to your home automation controller, and then um, trigger the, uh, the lights based on your presence. And the same thing with once it detected that there was no activity, perhaps after a certain timer expired, you know, no activity for you know, at least a minute, maybe five minutes or so, then the lights would turn off. So, funny that uh, funny that you had emailed in right when you did because I literally around the same time had just released our follow-up episode on these guys, these Zuli smart plugs, which these detect presence based on proximity to a smartphone. So, um, we did an entire episode on this. I'm not going to explain it all over again because you can literally go and watch the episode and we'll have it linked here. Um, these, if you have three of these or more, they can triangulate um, fairly accurately. We demonstrated that in a tiny place. They, they don't do it perfectly, but in a larger place and with, I think, probably four to six of these guys, they can triangulate your position, assuming you have your phone in your pocket in your home and you can set um, them up for automatic detection of your presence in a certain area or in a certain room and automatically turn on lights and potentially also turn them off after a certain timeout period. And the kicker is it also works with Philips Hue. You can tell um, the app to connect up to your Philips Hue lights. You can then place those lights in these sort of virtual spaces um, that, have, that are basically in the same space say you, that you had it in the bedroom you have one of these in the bedroom and it's detecting your presence there along with you know triangulating with the other two or three that are in your home and the app you can tell the app that this that say uh, you say that you have two Philips Hue um, lights in your bedroom you tell the app these two lights are in the bedroom so when I walk into the bedroom trigger the lights to turn on so the app can trigger Philips Hue lights, it can trigger other devices, it can help out with the Nest thermostat and some advanced um, uh, kind of dimming glass um, for um, from a, a company that I cannot remember the name of. But it's all in that episode and it is actually pretty cool. It works and it works basically out of the box. Um, you don't need anything else. If you just want lighting control, even if you don't have Philips Hue, you can just get these smart plugs, plug them in, they dim lights, they control appliances, they do all kinds of things, and they are uh, really simple. This was a Kickstarter project that turned into a real product and a real company, and um, we generally like them. And they are potentially software upgradable to work with other smart home, um, smarter home, home automation systems. So that's the answer. That's the short answer to that. Watch the episode. It's pretty cool. We did a whole... Um, 
demo and stuff and um, they're pretty cool um, little controllers so that can sort of expand uh, how your Philips Hue lights can operate so thanks for the question as I get back to my email uh, thanks Jacob for your question and for being a fan of the channel and um, staying with us so the last thing is not a question I just kind of want to throw this out there um, we never I generally do not um, put products or apps or information out there um, on the channel of something that I really haven't touched or that I really don't believe in, even based on other information that's out there or reviews or taking a look at um, manufacturer's detailed information. But uh, we were contacted by a company, by the developer of an app um, a couple weeks ago, and we haven't finished um, reviewing the app and testing everything out. But it does at least one thing that I think is fantastic. and it acts as a bridge between things, Internet of Things, or home automation devices that normally, out of the box, don't talk to each other directly. And that's the, that's the app itself, which is called Yonomi, Y-O-N-O-M-I. We'll probably put the spelling like up there or somewhere down there or something like that. Um, it works with many different things. I believe it's like 50 to 60 different things and potential services that are out there for um, the smarter home. But for me, I thought this was phenomenal when I found out that it could work with the Amazon Echo and it could work with the August Smart Lock, which of course I have back there. And the problem, of course, with the original August Smart Lock was that even with the August Connect device, um, which allows the lock to be controlled and monitored remotely from when you're not home, it doesn't work with anything else out of the box. It's sort of proprietary, and August kind of picks and chooses who they work with, or a developer has to have an app, and they have to deal with the code and so forth. So the fact is that Yanomi um, at, was able to add the August, among many other things, such as Philips Hue and the Nest and, and so forth, many, many other devices, but that they can also literally out of the box by just syncing up to, you know, different accounts, you know, your August account, your Amazon Echo account, multiple different accounts and cross-linking it to different devices, the fact that you can use the Echo to do voice control for devices that the Echo itself normally can't control. So I could say something like, Alexa, Turn on, unlock front door. Okay. And she's working on that. And the August unlocks. Um, it's going to relock itself automatically in 30 seconds because that's how I have it set. Um, I don't have a lock command. And again, it sounds funny because it's like turn on something because that's the sort of the hacked way that you have to do things because all, because the um, Amazon Echo just sort of understands devices. And so eventually at some point, all of this um, voice control stuff will make a lot more sense in terms of when you're talking to the Amazon Echo. And apparently it's locking itself again. Anyhow, um, <laughs> nothing is perfect. But one day, um, all of this stuff will get better in terms of it will make more sense when you talk to your um, listening devices to just say unlock the front door um, instead of having to say turn on this scene or device that actually activates something else. So just a teaser. I don't want to go into a huge thing. The Yonomi app is free. It's available on Android and iOS. We're going to be doing a full review of it. We may even do some kind of special thing um, with the developer um, in the coming months. But I already like this one feature that I can kind of just unlock the door by voice, um, which I think is killer. And it doesn't require like additional crazy setup steps, just like two minutes and you're done. So pretty cool stuff. Um, end of the episode, we thank the patrons. We thank people like, if I zoom in, I can read this, uh, Christian S, John S, Sean and Jim J over at Patreon. They are a couple of our Patreon supporters. Patreon um, allows you to directly financially contribute to the show if you want to give us a buck a month or two or five or ten or more than that. And it allows us to continue to expand the amount of devices that we can cover 
and make work um, with the um, different devices that we've already got in the home studio um, and in kind of like this smarter home that is set up here. Because basically manufacturers sometimes will send us stuff to evaluate for free, sometimes we can keep it, sometimes we can't. Um, and as you know, um, smarter home devices and LED lights and advanced cool stuff um, cost money. So um, your support of the show um, by either just watching the show and sharing it with your friends or shopping via our Amazon affiliate links or smarthome.com links or other links in the future um, or potentially contributing directly um, allows us to keep doing this and to, to expand even further and to keep the show going and growing. So it's with your support that uh, over the past two years, um, two years plus now, that's allowed the show to grow to where it is now, and we're going to do really cool stuff in the future. Speaking of that, as the summer continues forward, uh, look forward as we get to the end of June and early July that you'll see more episodes, a little shorter episodes, some how-tos and stuff coming out as I've been able to really move more of my time, almost my probably full time, uh, to this uh, channel and to working on great content for you guys. And the website will get a little bit more filled out with uh, articles to, to be companions to the, the videos as well. So look for cool stuff coming out. Um, I couldn't do this without all of your support. So again, keep those questions coming, keep the comments coming, all that good stuff on the YouTube channel. Um, and again, questions at smarterhomelife.com is the way to reach me for questions that may show up on an upcoming episode. So let's see, we've talked about this and that and covered the Q&As, covered Patreon, covered all the other good stuff. That is pretty much the end of the episode. Coming up on Monday, of course, WWDC from Apple. We'll see what they have to say about what's what's changing in the HomeKit world, in the Siri world, and anything that surrounds the smarter home and home automation will report on it and uh, get you more information in tidbits as the week progresses. And that's it. That's it for the end of the episode, uh, or for the episode, and uh, that was just fantastic. But we'll just we won't edit that out. I'm Joe Deganzik for Smarter Home Life. See you next time.